In his new book, Designer Genes, author Ken Harrington discusses how God designed the seeds of your character to create and further your destiny. He now discusses with David Noble the origins and inspirations that went into Designer Genes. So the book, Designer Genes. Yes. Ken, where did you get the idea for the book? Well, actually, I was working at a construction site up in northern Alberta late one night, and uh, the Holy Spirit just dropped the whole outline for that one, and, and actually the next book, uh, Shift, that's coming out uh, later. Uh, in 45 minutes, I got, I got the outline of the whole thing, and I just wrote as fast as I could. I wasn't worried about anything, just writing down everything I got, and really that's where it came from. It just mm. dropped into my spirit. Amazing. A lot of exciting things, of course, that's how they come. It's by, would you say it's the inspiration of God? Uh, I, I believe so. I believe if uh, God wanted me to be his instrument to, to write that book for the, for the body, and, uh, and uh, I was excited to do it. <laughs> right. Now, you go as far to say that, that the characteristics that we have actually can contain the power of God. Yeah, I, I used to think that powerful people of God were, were just like this big, huge balloon, you know, that they were just so much bigger than all the rest of us. But what God started to show me was that, no, He empowers each area of our life. Uh, that's why you can have people that, that really have uh, faith, like Paul talks about, that have faith that can move mountains, but they don't have love. And mm. so it really doesn't work out, it doesn't count for anything. And, and, and so we need to look at all the areas that, that God says are important uh, in our own particular way that we express them and allow God to start to show us, do I need more of that? Now, you mentioned about uh, the power being contained. Uh, is this possibly the problem that we've seen uh, in, in, in Christianity where there's been some, some prominent leaders who, because of uh, moral failings or, or some aspect of their character, a flaw, uh, they've sometimes sacrificed their whole ministries and, uh, as they've fallen. Is yeah. this the kind of thing that, that you're, you're, you're looking to, to prevent from? from yeah, I, I believe that was one of the impetuses for bringing the book out was was this seeing leaders that that have this huge gifting and power but then they come to a place where they haven't been healed or haven't allowed the rest of the body to walk with them and one aspect of their character whether it's it's greed or whether it's sexual things or whether it's pride uh, will derail the thing and and Satan he waits for the right moment you mm -hmm. know? Oh, yeah. and, <clears throat> but power uh, is an amplifier just like money is. So if you, if you have a little bit of money and you do good, when you have a lot of money, you'll do good. If you have a little bit of money and you're an evil person, when you got more money, you'll be more evil. Mm -hmm. So the power of the Holy Spirit does the same thing. It, it amplifies both the good and the bad. And, mm -hmm. and the pressure that comes from, from the, the ministry mm -hmm. will actually uh, cause things to blow apart. And this is why it's good for us to, uh, to allow people to speak into our lives before we get into a place where all this power comes out so we can get healed and, and these things don't blow apart in front of the whole world. Right. Now, you even go as far to say in, in the book that, uh, that God wants to kill us. What do you mean by that? Well, I think it's uh, really a, a take on what Jesus says is that you can't put a, a patch on, a, on an old garment or you, you, uh, you can't put new wine in an old wine skin. Is that God wants to empower us. But the container, which is our character, is not sufficient to function with more power. We're usually operating right to the limit of what we can handle. And if we want to go higher, then we actually have to die and go lower in an area. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then God can, can put it all back together, and He can fill you up with His power, and, and you will manifest Him instead of manifesting right. your own weaknesses. So let's say someone's got some of these character flaws. Do you think that, that which we all do? We all do. We all do. Um, <clears throat> do you think that by reading this book, there, are there solutions in there or, or, yes. or, or roads to help people? Uh, I included a lot of, lot of word in there, a lot, a lot of scripture, uh, so that they weren't just getting my ideas, they were actually getting God's mm. take on things. And, and his continual encouragement. You can do this. You can do this. If I can do this, if I could change, if God could transform me and my, and my wife, uh, then anybody can do this. this. This isn't about some super Christian. This, this is about uh, 
somebody who's experienced the goodness and the love of God and the patience in allowing for me to grow and develop. And, and like I say, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Why? Because it's God that's doing the thing. And we're just the vessels if we will allow Him to work in those areas of our character that really don't match up with uh, the giftings and the callings so that we can reach the destiny that He's got for us. Mm. So, and you actually talk <coughs> about that, that there's, there's revelation power in God's Word and yes. that that can actually by reading it and uh, it, it can bring healing and it, it can bring a, a solution right. to some of these these areas of my, my thoughts struggle aren't aren't revelation my, my thoughts are ideas some of them have come from from revelation a good percentage of them but God's Word actually is what brings light and life so I've incorporated vast amounts of scripture in it, but rather than putting them in blocks that people have a tendency to ignore or that are filled up with so many ideas you, you can't really keep the flow of the author going, what I've done is I've taken the, the pertinent areas of verses or several verses and phrased them out, made sure that you can tell what's God's word and what's mine, and stuck them all through so that, so that the word as you read it, you, you're, getting, uh, you're getting the word. Uh, the average chapter has 77 scriptures in it, uh, but it doesn't read like that. It reads just like a, a nice, clean flow. And, and so that way, the revelatory power that's in the scriptures can, can bring hope and, and, and uh, change to you. That this is what we want. We want to impart. And God's Word is what imparts. I don't, I don't impart ideas. Uh, you can learn ideas from me, but God's Word actually imparts, and that's what will change you.